Welcome to an example on how to solve an initial value problem involving a second order Cauchy Euler differential equation. A second order Cauchy Euler differential equation fits this form here. The important thing to notice is that for each term, the degree of the coefficient equals the order of the derivative. In order to solve a second order Cauchy Euler differential equation, we use what's called an auxiliary equation, which is similar to the characteristic equation for a second order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. But the auxiliary equation is different than the characteristic equation. The auxiliary equation is often given in one of these two forms that are equivalent. The solutions to this equation give us the information we need in order to find the general solution to the given cauchy euler differential equation. Where if the auxiliary equation has two distinct real roots, this is the form of the general solution. If the auxiliary equation has two real equal roots, the general solution is in this form. And if the auxiliary equation has complex roots in the form of alpha plus or minus beta i, the general solution is in this form. In all cases, we assume x is greater than zero. So going back to our example, let's first find the values of a, b, and c. Notice a is equal to one, b is equal to negative three, and c is equal to positive four. So the auxiliary equation would be, because a is one, we'd have m times the quantity m minus one, and for plus b times m, because b is negative three, we'd have minus three m, and then plus c would be plus four equals zero. Let's go and distribute, so we have m squared minus one m minus three, and that's minus four m, plus four equals zero. It's will factor. Factors of m squared are m and m. The factors of positive four that add to negative four are negative two and negative two. So we can write this as the quantity m minus two squared equals zero. So we have a solution of m equals two, which has multiplicity two. So we have two real equal roots, which means the general solution is going to be in this form here. Going back to our previous notes, notice how this is case two. So the general solution is y of x equals c sub one times x squared plus c sub two times x squared times natural log x. And again, we're assuming x is greater than zero. And now we have the initial conditions, y of one equals negative two and y prime of one equals negative seven. So before we use these initial conditions though, let's find y prime of x. y prime of x is equal to the derivative of c sub one x squared plus c sub two x squared natural log x. So the derivative of the first term is going to be c sub one times two x or two times c sub one x plus, to find the derivative of the second term, we'll have to apply the product rule. So we'll have the first function, c sub two x squared times the derivative of natural log x, which is one over x, plus the second function, which is natural log x, times the derivative of c sub two x squared, that'd be two c sub two x. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Y prime of x equals two c sub one x plus, here one factor of x will simplify out. So we have c sub two x plus, here we'll have two c sub two x natural log x. So now let's use y of x, y prime of x, and the two initial conditions to find c sub one and c sub two. Let's do this on the next slide. So because y one equals negative two, we'll substitute one for x and negative two for y of x. So if x equals one, this first term would be c sub one plus, well if x is one, natural log one is zero. So we just have plus zero equals negative two. So we know that c sub one must equal negative two. Now because y prime of one equals negative seven, we'll substitute one for x and negative seven for y prime of x. 
So we'd have two times C sub one plus C sub two plus, again, natural log one is equal to zero. So this term would be zero and this must equal a negative seven. So we know two times C sub one plus C sub two equals negative seven. We also know C sub one equals negative two. So we'd have two times negative two plus C sub two equals negative seven. So notice here we have negative four plus C sub two equals negative seven, adding four, C sub two equals negative three. Which means the particular solution is Y of X equals, again C sub one is negative two, so we have negative two X squared plus C sub two is negative three, so we actually have minus three X squared natural log X. The game where we know that x must be greater than zero. So going back to our first slide, this is what we enter here. Y or y of x equals negative two x squared minus three x squared natural log x. I hope you found this helpful.